All right, welcome. This is the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 6, Simple Harmonic Motion. This section is 6.D, Measuring the Spring Constant. Here's the scenario. Angelica and Blake are given a spring and asked to determine its spring slash spring constant. Both students are given a stand on which the spring may be attached. Different known masses can be attached to the spring and an electrical balance. Part A. Angelica, in addition to the equipment above, is given a meter stick but has no access to the stopwatch or any other measuring to measure time. Explain how can she measure and how those measurements can be used to calculate the spring constant. In short, this question is asking how to get the spring constant without time. Okay. Um, let's take a look at example three that should remind you from your notes. A 10 kilogram mass is hung from a spring and lowered to equilibrium, displacing the mass 40 centimeters, or if you would like this in meters, it would be uh, 0 0.40 meters. Dis determine the spring constant. Here it's at equilibrium, then a match is attached, pulling it down. The force of gravity is pulling it down. It's equal and opposite force is the force of the spring. This is the free body diagram. Force gravity is pulling it down. What's up is the force of the spring. Here you have force of the spring equals to force of gravity. If you would like to see before this, uh, it looked like this. Summation of the forces is equal to the mass times acceleration. The object is at equilibrium, so the mass and acceleration is zero. The two forces on the vertical is the force of the spring minus force of the gravity. Force of gravity is considered going down. That's why I made it negative. That's why it's negative Fg divided over. This is useful because they got the spring constant K. How did they get the spring constant K here? You would like to see that the spring constant K is just mg over x1. x1 is defined as the displacement. If you consider this as x0, x1 is the length stretched. Okay, so if you would like to see how you could get the spring constant, okay. We can go back up here and we can solve and we can try to get the K somehow. Okay. We need to know that the X1 can be equal to MG is just force of gravity divided by your K. Force of gravity, divide this by your K. If we graph a graph and we have the input as the force of gravity and this is your length displacement you can get the K from the slope all right so the slope of the F G versus x1 which is the length stretch will give you the slope of the fg versus stretch will give you will give is equal to the spring constant all right now let's take a look on how we would write that okay i'm just going to say it to you here okay so listen up you first have to hang the object vertically without a mass. Then you would hang a mass. Once you hang a mass, you have to measure the length stretch. That is what you are measuring, the length stretch. You would have to repeat this experiment for different masses so you can reduce the error. That's the answer for this one. What measurement can you use to calculate? Okay, and like I will say it here, to calculate the change in the length of the spring, you have to get two things. The how much the spring stretches for, for what force of gravity. 
So you're going to graph now the force of gravity versus the amount stretch. The slope of that line will give you the spring constant. Exactly like what I said there should be here. Okay. Next, part B. In addition to the equipment above, Blake is now given a stopwatch but has no access to the meter stick or any other way to measuring device. Explain how he can measure and how these measurements can be used to calculate the spring constant. This is saying here you have now um, a time component, but you no longer have a distance component that you can measure. Okay, so you have time but no distance. For time and no distance, okay, this is um, has time but no way to measure distance you would have to approach this method, okay? You could read this to yourself here. I explained how to get this in a previous video. If you square it, you get t squared equals to four pi squared over km. If you graph a, if you graph this, you would get a straight line. The slope here will give you your k. So if you graph, another way of graphing it would be your, t squared, which is your period squared, and here would be your mass. Okay, at different masses, you will produce different uh, periods. Okay, so how measurement will be made? Okay, you are going to hang it vertically here, and you will stretch it. You're going to pull down the mass to its max stretch okay then you then you're gonna let it go you're going to see how many times it oscillates okay in one period or one second that is how you would get time good you would repeat this experiment okay for different masses okay did you hear that you are going to get a mass then you're going to stretch it let it go and see how many times it oscillates in one second because the definition of t is period and period is defined as the amount of oscillation in one second okay then you're going to repeat this for different masses now how will it be used to calculate k you would then square the period and you're going to graph a mass versus period squared the slope of the line here is going to be this 4 pi squared over k then you could use this to solve for k the spring constant all right Next, okay, suppose that both students and the classroom, in including all equipment, are now transported to a different planet where the acceleration due to gravity is greater than of Earth. For each student lists any measurement being taken and how would they differ from the new planet. The thing about the new planet is that it just has a gravity is greater than earth right so g is different right so let me bring up the two methods so um, angelica was going to figure this one out right angelica was going to use this okay let's see if i can fit it here uh Okay, this is Angelica's, right? And, oops, sorry. This was Angelica's, right? Okay. All right. All right. 
then <laughs> this is going to be uh, here. Then this was Blake's method, right? Using this and the slope would be this. Okay. Now, just take a look. I'm going to say it, so you have to listen, okay? So, in this planet, okay, the ch the displacement of the str of the spring is going to be different because the fg is going to be different. Force of gravity is going to be different. So your input value here, your fg is going to be completely different. That is affected by the force of gravity on this planet. Okay? Remember, this is mass times acceleration. The acceleration here is going to be different. Blake's measurement is actually not going to be affected at all because this one only depends on the mass. Uh, this right that is what it depends on the stiffness this is the stiffness of spring that does not change depending on the different planets okay this the spring is still the spring on this planet or another planet the time here has does not depend uh, the oscillation pe the period or how much it oscillates does not depend on the force of gravity. So, in short, Angelica is actually going to be different because the acceleration on the new planet will be different, and her calculation depends on the force of gravity. Okay? Part D. Which student or both will obtain a different value for the spring constant? Okay, so, let me... Okay, I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to type it, okay? First of all, Blake, Blake's calculation is never going to be any different because his does not depend on the force of gravity whatsoever. So his calculation is going to be the same on this planet and the next planet because his calculation only depends on the mass. Okay, and the stiffness of the spring does not change. So the period in which the object oscillates does not change on this planet or the next planet. Therefore, Blake's calculation is going to remain the same. Now, Angelica's calculation might be different, but the spring constant is going to be the same. Why? Because her calculation, the ratio is going to change. Okay, so if you take a look, the new planet, right, the new planet, Okay, the new planet here, let's say the force of gravity is uh, larger, okay? The fact that it is larger, the spring is going to be stretched more, okay? So let's say this, the force of gravity, okay, went up by a factor of 2. Good? That means this is, uh, the, the amount of stretch is also going to go up by 2. So, it doesn't matter. The 2 here and the 2 here cancels out. If this go end up by 4, this is also going to be stretched more by 4. Both have a linear relationship. So, the ratio is going to remain the same. So, 4 and for Angelica, her values or her calculation it is going to yield the same spring constant on this planet and the next planet. Because although the force of gravity might be more, the f there is going to be a higher uh, force of gravity on that planet pulling down on the spring, but that means the spring length that gets stretched is also going to be more. So the ratio the slope for it is still going to be the same on this planet as well as the next planet. Okay? So the spring constant values are actually the same. Okay? So there you go. Um, if you would like a better, a little bit better explanation um, for the experiment, uh, you can read this. Okay? 
So to investigate, you're going to start with Hooke's Law. Um, I would use the Law of Simple Harmonic Motion to get a better estimate to compare the two results. Okay, the first one is to use Simple Harmonic Motion formula. I would need the time or the period of the oscillation of the spring when a certain mass is hanging for it. Then you will derive this. T squared equals 4 pi squared mass times the spring constant. You should already know this. Now, but if you um, here have the force of gravity, okay, uh, you could also get the um, period here as well. So there's different calculations. It's done the same way, okay? So a couple of things that you need to understand that this method is used with no time. This one is, there is, there is no time being measured. Okay, there's no time being measured here for this part. Okay, you are measuring distance. You are measuring, measuring distance. Mm. Displacement of the spring due to the mass hanging. This is a better explanation, okay? Here has time, but no way to measure distance. This is why you are going to um, measure the oscillation from the spring under going a uh, simple harmonic motion okay there you go all right i did not write this you have to uh, listen to the explanation for it okay there you go